hello everybody and welcome back to another video on pediatric dentistry simplified i apologize for the lag in the video upload i've actually had a few changes in my life recently i got married to my best friend and the preps have kept me away from youtube but anyways i'm back with one of the most requested video series on my channel and that's pulp therapy this series will cover the basics of pulp vital and non vital pulp therapies medicaments irrigants and much more in today's video we'll be checking out the basics of pulp how the primary pulp is different as compared to the adult version and the pain associated with pulpal pathologies so grab your pens and your notebooks and let's jump right in so pulp as we all know is the innermost layer of the tooth it's the mesenchymal connective tissue it is unmineralized and it contains the vascular the lymphatic and the nervous tissue elements of the tooth now the main question that always pops up when we look at pediatrics is that how is the pulp of the deciduous teeth different from that of the adult teeth so let's have a look at that so for starters the primary teeth are smaller in dimension but they are wider mesiodistally they have flared out roots and that is so that the permanent tooth that is erupting from below can fit in and erupt eventually they have thinner enamel and dentine and because of that the pulp chamber is larger so whenever we're doing a root canal therapy for primary teeth which is pulpectomy therapy we actually feel the burr drop comes faster in terms of primary teeth as compared to the adult teeth that is because of the thinner enamel and the dentine they have higher projecting pulp horns in the molars they are more tortuous and ribbon shaped canals so the canals are more tortuous and ribbon shaped they have more accessory canals at the percussion area as compared to the adult teeth now when we look at the pulp there could be several factors that could lead to pulpal necrosis and various other pulpal pathologies so let's look at those one of them is a scenario where the tooth undergoes trauma due to a fall directly hitting the teeth or getting a direct blow to the teeth in this case the teeth can undergo ischemia as you can see in the in the uh, as you can see the photograph of the tooth shown the tooth would start to appear black the tooth would start to appear discolored next is a constant stimuli like your long standing irritants uh, like your caries your deep fillings and chronic inflammation this would lead to calcifications in the pulp so if you can see in the image the central incisor does not show any canal and the pulp is completely obliterated and now comes the main one that is when the pulp is affected with a noxious stimuli now a noxious stimuli is anything that is an actual or a potential tissue damaging event this could eventually lead to uh, reversible pulpitis in the early stages and if the reversible pulpitis is not cured it could lead to irreversible pulpitis now irreversible pulpitis is then further classified into four more stages so starting with the first one that is chronic hyperplastic pulpitis which we all know as pulp polyp symptomatic irreversible pulpitis where the patient gives a history of pain non symptomatic uh, irreversible pulpitis where the patient does not have any pain because of the long standing dental decay that has actually made the pulp get necrosed for a long time to the to the point that all the nerve fibers are dead and hence the patient no longer feels pain and finally we come to internal resorption where the osteoclastic cells which are your resorbing cells they start to eat up the dentinal tissue and hence the tooth starts to resorb internally now let's look at what we deal with usually and that is your reversible and your irreversible pulpitis so let's quickly look at what the key differential points are between these two when we look at irreversible pulpitis the pain might be absent or present the pain is often moderate to severe the pain is always in an increasing frequency to the point that the patient always tells us that the pain is continuous the pain lingers and it it increases with increasing episodes and the patient usually requires an analgesic or a painkiller in these situations whereas when we look at reversible pulpitis the patient usually does not have pain but it they have sensitivity due to the mild discomfort the pain usually is shorter in duration and it is shooting but it's not severe the pain is usually in infrequent episodes it could finally result in irreversible pulpitis if the source that is causing the pain is not removed 
and the pain usually subsides when the stimulus is removed now in both these cases the common factor that we see is pain and to analyze what kind of pain it is we check out the key points now what are these key points so it starts with onset that is when does the pain usually occur the frequency that is how often does the pain occur during the day the duration that is how long does the pain last for example in case of reversible pulpitis the pain stops as soon as your stimulus is removed whereas in irreversible it continues even though the stimulus is removed intensity that is how bad the pain is localization is the pain localized only to one tooth that is usually seen in case of reversible pulpitis in case of severe pulpal necrosis the infection usually spreads beyond the apex into the bone as well as the other regions so the patient cannot pinpoint where the pain is exactly the patient also sometimes complain that the pain is radiating to the entire jaw up to the ear also aggravating factors that is what usually aggravates the pain so the patient usually complains that whenever he is having cold food or uh, when they when he is sleeping uh, during the night time chewing food all of these factors are actually aggravating factors which increase the amount of pain relieving factors are what cause relief to the pain uh, relief to the patient as the name suggests so that is uh, uh, like removing the food that is stuck in the dental cavity stopping the consumption of cold water or ice cream all of these are indicative of reversible pulpitis that means the stimulus is removed whereas if the patient has relief only on the consumption of analgesics that means it's pointing towards irreversible pulpitis so these factors along with the radiographic analysis gives us an idea of what kind of pulpal diseases the patient has now how and where does this does this pain come from so let's look at the exact pathway and the key nerve fibers that cause this pain now as we've all read our teeth are they supplied by the fifth cranial nerve that is our trigeminal nerve this trigeminal nerve has three different pathways again so we have your v1 your v2 your v3 which is your ophthalmic branch your maxillary branch which goes which goes to your maxilla the mandibular branch which goes to the mandible and all of these branches they have their sensory fibers now the sensory fibers of the trigeminal ganglion what they do is they enter the apical foramen of the tooth and they spread throughout the pulp and these sensory fibers they are of two types now these are your a fibers and your c fibers your a fibers are then further divided into your a delta fibers and your a beta fibers so whenever we're talking about pulpal pain these two fibers are your main key considering points the a fibers are they comprise of 93% of your a delta fibers and 7% of your a beta fibers now how are they different from c fibers these a fibers they are myelinated they have a myelin sheath present and because they are myelinated they have a faster conduction speed that means the pain sensation is felt faster here the location of these fibers is at the pulp dentine border that means they are more superficial as compared to the c fibers the c fibers are usually present deep inside the core of the pulp whereas the a fibers are present at the periphery these a fibers are activated through hydrodynamic action that means through fluid flow now what does that mean so whenever there is a stimulus like cold water or ice cream or electrical stimulus like uh, when we use the ept that is your electrical pulp testing the dentinal tubules they have fluid that flows through them and this movement of the fluid stimulates the fibers which in turn generate pain now as i mentioned because of the myelination the pain transmission in the a delta fibers is faster okay and that is because the transmission directly reaches the thalamus in the brain and because of this the patient experiences sharp shooting pain so any stimulus like your uh, your aerator the drilling because of the aerator sweet foods cold items and even the air from your three way could lead to sensitivity and activation of these fibers now the other key factor that separates the uh, these a fibers from the c fibers is the diameter these fibers are more wider in in the in terms of the diameter so the conduction rate is faster because it has more space to travel so the conduction velocity uh, in your a fibers is faster as compared to your c fibers which are thinner 
Now looking at your C fibers, these are unmyelinated and because of that the pain felt by the patient is always delayed because the conduction velocity is slower. Now because the conduction velocity is slower, the pain felt by the patient is usually dull and it's poorly localized. So the patient feels the pain in that region but they usually cannot pinpoint where exactly the pain is. Uh, so now we understand that since the C fibers are located deep inside the pulp, that means the damage is extensive. So that means that the damage has traveled a long way and it has finally reached the core of the pulp where the C fibers usually are. So whenever your C fibers are involved, it usually means that it is irreversible pulpitis. Another way that the C fibers differ from that are differ from that of the A fibers is in case of hypoxia that is low oxygen level. Now as we saw A fibers are thicker and C fibers are thinner in diameter. So the oxygen consumption in A fibers are higher as compared to C fibers. So whenever there is an injury which results in the interruption of the oxygen supply, the C fibers they continue to function but the A fibers die. So in this cases when there is hypoxia, when there is trauma, when the patient has suffered a, a case where the pulp is not receiving ex any oxygen, whenever we put a cold CO2 stick as a diagnosing agent and if the response is negative, that means if the patient does not flinch, does not show any sort of pain, that means the A fibers are already dead. So now that we have seen the fibers, how do we diagnose them? How do we know which fibers are actually affected and what the patient usually, uh, what the patient is actually facing? So here the pulp testing modes usually come into play. So the pulp testing modes basically are divided into three different groups. That is your pulp vitality testing, your sensibility testing and your sensitivity testing. Okay. Now vitality testing is basically assessing the blood supply that the pulp is receiving. This is done with the help of the pulse oximeter as well as your laser color Doppler. So the oxygen saturation levels are checked with these uh, with these tools. So in case of a trauma, in in case when if the patient has uh, has faced trauma, where we can see that the tooth has turned black, that means there is hypoxia. There is less oxygen in that area. That there is in fact no oxygen in that area. So the pulp has faced hypoxia, and that can be diagnosed through these case uh, through these tests. Next is sensibility. Uh, now sensibility includes your hot tests which is done by your heated gutta percha sticks, your cold tests which are done by the uh, CO2 sticks or your ice sticks and your EPT that is your electrical pulp testing. These tests they indicate the ability of the pulp to respond to a stimulus presented to it. And lastly is your sensitivity test. Now the above mentioned tests are used for sensitivity as well. But a sensitivity test basically indicates the condition of the pulp to be very responsive. Now this may be a little conf confusing like what is sensitivity, what is sensibility. So let's simplify that. Every pulp has sensory fibers and these fibers will respond to the stimulus because that is how the body's nervous system is designed, right? Whenever a nerve fiber is stimulated, there is some sort of pain or some sort of sensation felt. So the sensibility test, it just checks how sensible the pulp fibers are to these stimulus. So if the pulp fibers are getting affected, that means they are still working. They are viable. Sensitivity basically checks how sensitive the pulp is to the stimulus that is projected on it. So if at all the A fibers are affected because of any damage to the pulp, the cold stimulus will generate a much faster response in these case than in terms of a normal tooth which has no condition. So the fibers are more sensitive now to the test. And in case where the, pulp, where the tooth is necrosed, the EPT, that is your electrical pulp testing and your cold stimulus will have no fibers to stimulate because they are dead. So there will be no response as compared to the tooth with no condition. So again, the sensitivity of the test has varied. So that is the main difference between sensibility and sensitivity. Sensibility checks your normal functioning of the fibers. Sensitivity tech checks how sensitive it is. So I hope there's no confusion about the sensitivity and the sensibility anymore. Then that, like, now finally we come to the various conditions, the various responses 
that the pulp uh, shows in various conditions so if at all the pulp is normal there will be a positive response to all the sensibility tests they will not be exaggerated they will not be slow and they will not linger because the pulp is normal it's just giving a normal response in cases of pulpitis there is an exaggerated response that causes pain so if there is an if there is a reversible pulpitis the pain is of mild uh, there is a mild pain with a shorter duration but it does not linger if it is an irreversible pulpitis there is severe pain and the pain usually lingers in case of necrosis in case when the pulp all the fibers are dead okay there is an absence of response because there are no fibers which are left now to be stimulated okay so these are your various pulpal responses based on your various diseases that are projected onto the pulp so always remember cold testing and ept are always associated with the a fibers they are to check the a fibers and the hot tests that is your heated gutta percha is for your c fibers so i hope that this was clear i hope that now we all understand how the pulp usually faces pain because of the various pathologies that are inflicted upon it in the next video we will be we'll start with the vital pulp therapy and we'll also look at the non vital th uh, pulp therapy we'll look at basically how pulpotomy and pulpectomy are different in both of their ways and we'll also be looking at the various agents that are used uh in both of these conditions i really hope that it cleared your doubts i'll see you again with the next video bye bye